Hi, I'm Brian Jacobson. I'm one of the associate editors for Gastrointestinal Endoscopy. I'm here with Will Bolsowitz, a second year fellow at University of North Carolina. We're going to be discussing his paper that was in GIE recently, EMR before RFA is equally effective and safe to RFA alone for Barrett's esophagus with advanced neoplasia. Um, Will, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you guys did in this study? So what we did in this study is took a group of patients with high-grade dysplasia and intramucosal carcinoma. And we were looking at whether or not endoscopic mucosal resection prior to radiofrequency ablation would achieve similar outcomes in terms of safety and efficacy for the treatment um, of Barrett's esophagus compared to radiofrequency ablation alone. And so essentially the question in our mind is, can EMR for resection of nodular disease followed by RFA of now flat, uh, flat Barrett's esophagus achieve a similar effect to radiofrequency ablation of flat Barrett's alone. And how often do we find nodular Barrett's versus flat uh, or neoplasia? Right, it's, it's really hard to say exactly how often we come across nodular disease because there haven't been any good studies where they've done, uh, you know, essentially screening endoscopies and said, okay, this is the prevalence of nodular, you know, nodular Barrett's esophagus. Um, but um, our experience at the University of North Carolina, which needs to be taken with a grain of salt because we have a large referral base and mm -hmm. that can certainly play into what we see. But our experience has been about 25% of high-grade dysplasia has nodular disease and um, more than 90% of intramucosal carcinoma has nodular disease. So it does seem to be something that's um, found typically in high-grade dysplasia and intramucosal carcinoma and particularly with the IMC compared to the HDD. So, so what exactly did you find in your study? Um, so what we found is when we looked at the um, uh, EMR prior to RFA compared to RFA alone, there were similar, uh, similar rates of complications, including stricture, GI hemorrhage, and hospitalization. Um, there was no statistically significant difference between the two groups, and really there was no clinical difference in terms of the outcomes either. Um, with regards to the efficacy of, of the treatment um, for eradication of dysplasia and eradication of intestinal metaplasia, uh, we found that the rates were actually very similar um, in our intention to treat analysis, which um, took into account patients who were lost to follow up or had a um, other medical problem that came up. Um, despite despite that, in our intention to treat analysis, the rates of eradication of dysplasia and intestinal metaplasia were similar between the two groups. And um, when we did a per protocol analysis, where we just looked at the patients that completed treatment, we found that the rates were almost exactly the same. Mm. Now, if I remember, there was a study from the Mayo Group earlier that looked at a similar question and found a different outcome. Is there any way that uh, you, you could explain that? Yeah. The Mayo, the Mayo study was a, a nice study um, because it was the first um, to look at EMR before RFA versus RFA and have a comparative group. Um, prior to this, all of the studies had been case series, mostly out, out of the Amsterdam Med uh, Medical Center with Jock Bergman's group. And one of the issues with the Mayo study is that the EMR plus RFA group for nodular disease was about 90% high-grade dysplasia or intramucosal carcinoma, mm. whereas the RFA alone group was treating um, only 17% high-grade dysplasia and intramucosal carcinoma. So there was a tremendous difference in terms of the um, population that was being treated and the severity of their disease prior to treatment. And I think that that's something that potentially could have an impact in terms of the rates of, of uh, stricturing or uh, safety outcomes and in terms of the efficacy of the treatment. Um, uh, and I think that's, that's part of what explains the differences that we're seeing between their study and ours. Right, so, so yours was a little more apples to apples and theirs was a little apples to oranges. Uh -huh. And we tried to restrict um, our study population to uh, just patients with high-grade dysplasia and intramucosal carcinoma. Mm -hmm. Now, the group that had EMR prior to RFA would, had more cases of intramucosal carcinoma than did the RFA alone group. Um, but nevertheless, we think that this is a um, more fair or similar comparison rather than comparing high-grade dysplasia and intramucosal carcinoma to you know, non-dysplastic Barrett's and low-grade dysplasia. Right. So do you think RFA alone is sufficient for nodular dysplasia? Yeah, we would not recommend RFA alone for nodular dysplasia, and, and there's a few reasons for that. Um, one of the nice things about radiofrequency ablation is the consistent reproducibility, repro, reproducibility of the energy that, that is delivered. Mm -hmm. And so you uh, are able to achieve 
very good effectiveness. Um, at the same time, the stricture rate is low because it's only burning so deep into the mucosa. Yeah. And um, those, uh, the way that radiofrequency ablation was developed is so that you basically have direct opposition of the mucosa against the radiofrequency ablation device. And that's what allows it to deliver its energy in a consistent reproducible fashion. With nodular disease, of course, you're not able to get that direct opposition because you have an irregular contour of the mucosa. And for that reason, um, we would not recommend um, treatment with radiofrequency ablation alone for nodular disease. Um, additionally, the, the, the dosimetry or the dose that was developed for RFA was developed for flat mucosa. And we don't know if the dose that we would be giving for nodular disease would be effective. So for all patients with nodular disease, if RFA is to be the treatment, um, we would recommend endoscopic mucosal resection prior to RFA. Okay. So if you had one take-home message, what would that be? I think that one of the big questions in patients with nodular disease is, is this safe to treat endoscopically, or is this someone that should be referred to a surgeon? And in our study, we found um, similar rates of safety and in terms of efficacy of treating with EMR plus RFA compared to, to uh, RFA alone for flat disease. And um, to me, this um, suggests that patients with nodular disease, we really are able to treat endoscopically, and they don't necessarily need to be referred to a surgeon for um, uh, something such as esophagectomy, which has uh, serious um, uh, complications, uh, potentially. Right. And, and I think EMR is appealing to us uh, before RFA because you have tissue to send to a pathologist as opposed to just going in and destroying everything without having any tissue to analyze. Absolutely. You do have that added advantage of being able to more appropriately stage your patients. And in a reasonable percentage of cases, we have found that um, the, the stage of the patient was changed by that endoscopic mucosal resection specimen. Okay. Well, congratulations on your paper. And thank you for joining us today for this author interview. Thanks.